in the previous module we looked into one dimensional and two dimensional absorbing boundary condition as I said during those lectures the absorbing boundary conditions quality is going to depend on the angle of incidence in which the impinging wave is going to see the boundary condition. So for example if you have a normal incidence you see that the reflection is going to be ideally 0 whereas in a two dimensional or a three dimensional problem it is very difficult to get an exact boundary condition like we got in the case of the one dimensional absorbing boundary condition. So that being said since the inception of the finite difference method there has been a lot of development in the method itself but still the absorbing boundary condition was always a challenging thing and people resolved this by putting the boundary at a far away distance from the scatterer. So when you put the boundary at a far away distance what happens is your impinging wave or the incoming wave will see the boundary almost like a normal incidence. But that being said for that to happen we have to put the boundary at a very very far away distance that is going to increase the computational cost because we are going to simulate a larger space instead of a smaller space. So this was the problem of the finite difference since uh, its inception but that changed in the year 1994 when the French scientist named Beranger introduced a phenomenal method called a perfectly matched layer which instead of putting the boundary at a very far away distance you can basically put the boundary very close to the scatterer or the object of our interest but by adapting the parameters inside the layer you are going to match the layer to the actual domain of interest. In that sense the layer is going to be perfectly matched to the free space or the domain that we are interested in. Let us look into the perfectly matched layer in this particular lecture because it is going to be very important for you to know this particular technique because we will use this more and more in other methods as well. So initially when we are introducing this we are going to introduce this using finite difference method that we have learned so far in our mind but we will apply this method later on also for other methods. So let us start looking at the perfectly matched layer with finite difference method in our mind. Let us now look into the Beranger's perfectly matched layer. I am calling this as Beranger PML for a simple reason. So in the year 1994 when Beranger introduced this was the only PML that was available. So he did not call it Beranger PML for obvious reasons. But since the inception of the perfectly matched layer there has been so many different perfectly matched layer came into existence. So we will see those different perfectly matched layer at a later stage for now we will only look into the initial idea of Beranger of uh, introducing the perfectly matched layer for a finite difference formulation. So let us look into the domain that we are interested in assume that we are interested in modeling a domain consisting of an object and there are certain incident wave and there are certain scattered wave. We are going to truncate this domain instead of boundary we are going to truncate it using certain layers and obviously you see here we have different types of layers we have layer 1, layer 2, layer 3, layer 4, layer 5, layer 6, layer 7 and layer 8. We will see what are the similarities and dissimilarities between these layers later on for now it is enough to know these are the layers that we are interested in and we are going to truncate the layer itself using a perfect electric conductor and the thickness of the layer is going to be ideally delta and we will see that what this delta is going to be at a later stage. So as I said we want to have a perfect matched layer in that sense let us say you have a domain and you have certain layer that are surrounding the domain. As I said there are going to be certain differences in these domains. Let us say this is epsilon naught mu naught and this particular layer is going to be epsilon 1 comma mu 1 and I told you the impedances are going to be perfectly matched. In that sense Z naught should be equal to Z 1. So let us see what is going to be the mathematical implication of this or in fact even the physical implication of this condition. So when we say Z0 is equal to Z1 we are saying square root of mu0 divided by epsilon0 should be equal to square root of mu1 divided by epsilon1 that is equal to square root of mu0 epsilon r1 divided by epsilon0 epsilon r1. 
now we can see due to this condition we will get mu r1 will be equal to epsilon r1 in other words what will happen is we will have mu 1 divided by mu naught should be equal to epsilon 1 divided by epsilon naught this is the condition for perfect matching between the layers so thus being said let us look into a two dimensional tm case for modeling this problem so we will start with a tm case for the maxwell system represented by these three equation we will have mu d hx by dt plus d ez by d y equal to 0 we will have mu d h y d t minus d e z d x equal to 0 and we have the third equation epsilon d e z d t minus d h y d x plus d h x d y equal to 0. The thing about perfectly matched layer is not only that the impedances are matched as in the case we have said here we are also going to have certain losses. So we want the wave to see no difference between the medium where it is coming from and the perfectly matched layer. So that way we are able to see that the wave will go through without reflection but we also want the layer to have certain losses so that the incoming wave will get absorbed by the layer. So in that sense whatever is coming inside will move without reflection and while going inside the layer it gets absorbed. How it is going to absorb what is absorption coefficient is going to be we will see that later on but for you to know there are going to be certain absorption that is going to happen within the layer. So if we have an equation like this represented by the TM formulation of two dimensional Maxwell equation we wanted to have this absorption within the perfectly matched layer. One way to get the absorption is to have certain losses within the layer itself. So if this particular equation is going to be the equation for the perfectly matched layer we can have the losses inside the layer as the additional term that we are going to add for this particular equation. So that is going to be the loss terms that we are going to have. Since it is going to have a hx we are having sigma hx and since we have a flux component which is y component we are going to have sigma y here. Similarly since it is a hy component we will have plus sigma hy and since the flux component is a dx component we will have a loss component which is sigma x. Similarly here since it is a ez component we will have the ez value here and since it has both x and y flux components we will have sigma x plus sigma y. So what we have done now is basically we have got expression for the Maxwell equation within the PML using the perfectly matched condition and also the losses. So it is going to allow the wave to come inside and it is going to absorb the wave inside the perfectly matched layer. So now for us to model this equation in a finite difference algorithm we have to modify this equation a little bit. So that is what we are going to do next for us to practically model this equation for finite difference method. So for that what we are going to do is we are going to split the value of ez into ezx and ezy so that we can formulate it in the finite difference method and that is what we are going to see now. So as we saw in the case of the expression we have the loss term sitting here and the loss terms we are making them equal for both magnetic and electric case. So we do not have separate magnetic or electric losses 
we are only having a sigma which is a loss term and now we want that the theoretical reflection to be equal to 0 for any incidence angle and any frequency. The reason why we say for any frequency because when the frequency changes the number of cells is going to change accordingly. We want the perfectly matched layer to work for any frequency as well not only for any incidence also for any frequency. So now we are going to split the EZ accordingly as I said before and the first two equations gets transformed into this form and the third equation gets split into two further equations. So we can split the, the last term sigma component into sigma x component and sigma y component. So now we are going to see that the magnetic and electric losses are going to be equal to each other and then we are representing them as sigma x and sigma y and the choice of sigma x and sigma y is going to change within the domain. So as I said there are going to be several layers and we are going to see what is going to be the value of sigma x and sigma y in different layers. For now we will see how this is going to change. So the value we said this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 there are totally 8 layers. So the values of sigma is going to be different for different domains of the PML. So let us see how different it is going to be for layer 1 and 5. So that means for this layer and this layer sigma x is not equal to 0 whereas sigma y will be equal to 0. Similarly for the layer 7 and 3 we will have sigma x equal to 0 whereas sigma y is not equal to 0. Whereas in the case of the corner domains the layer 2, 4, 6 and 8 both sigma x and sigma y they are not equal to 0. So this is the beauty of this particular formulation that we can basically using this approach we can make the wave that is going to come inside the x oriented PML get absorbed only using sigma x value and the wave that is going to come in inside the y direction will get absorbed only using sigma y value and the wave that is going to come inside the corner domains is going to get absorbed both using sigma x and sigma y value. So here sigma x is not equal to 0. So now we will see how we can vary the value of sigma within a particular layer. So let us take as example of y oriented layer the same analysis can be done for x oriented layer. So let us say my x value is going from x equal to a to x equal to capital A. So when x goes from a to capital A I am going to change the value of sigma I have different choices. So let us say this is x equal to a and this is x equal to capital A. I can make the value of sigma as a step function like this. So that means this is the free space and when the wave is coming inside it is going to see a step function of the sigma which is okay if we are having a very 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 fine discretization. Our discretization is not going to be as fine as it should be for this case to be working. So in order to make it working for a finite discretization so we have to increase the value of sigma from certain value to certain value. So ideally we are going to increase it from 0 to certain value and that is what we are going to see here. So when the value of x is equal to small a this equation will become 0 whereas when the value of x equal to capital A this value will have the maximum value and the value of p is going to be the order of the profile for most practical applications we use quadratic profile which is a parabolic in the form. 
So similarly the counterpart for the y oriented PML for the third region so this is for this particular region is going to have the form as shown here in this equation where y goes from small b to capital B when y is equal to small b this is at the interface between the free space and the PML the value of sigma 3 will become 0 and the value of sigma 3 will be maximum when y is equal to capital B. Similarly in the corner domain you will have both the x and y values using the same profile that we have used for sigma 1 and sigma 3. So the choice of sigma naught and sigma p which are the maximum value of the loss inside the PML and the profile of the PML itself is going to play vital role in the accuracy of the perfectly matched layer. I also told you that the value of the reflection should be frequency independent but in practical applications it has certain frequency dependence. So for most practical applications we are going to set the value of PML equal to 1 lambda. The lambda of choice will be the minimum lambda of the source or the frequency that we are interested or simulating. So in this case you see that the delta value will be equal to 1 wavelength and the sigma x and sigma y will have a parabolic profile as we discussed before. So now we can see that the maximum value of sigma naught is also given by this equation it obeys certain law so here we are taking a natural logarithm and these are verified using numerical results for finite difference and finite volume approach. You can choose a value of r naught is equal to 10 power minus 2 or 10 power minus 3 or 10 power minus 4 and you can test this for various applications. So now we will stop at this point and come back in the next module to simulate the perfectly matched layer and absorbing boundary condition. Thank you. Mm -hmm.